So imagine, zombies are taking over. At first, it might sound a little silly, but I'm not talking about those dead humanoid things. The zombies I'm talking about may be around us, but we may not even notice. You remember your old computers, radios, TVs, and if you're older than me, DVD recorders. You ought not use them, so they have become zombies. And the sad part is, even if these zombies are growing at an alarming rate, not much actions have been taken against them. The zombies I'm talking about are popularly known as electronic waste or e-waste for short. Other fancy terms include e-scrap and end-of-life electronics. Basically, these are the electronics that are not working, useless or at the end of their useful life. Research has shown that many people are actually aware of e-waste. Still, we can't stop ourselves from generating more. Why? Well, you see, electronics are our necessity. Tell me. Can you live without refrigerator, washing machine, air conditioner, TV? No. And even these days, mobile phones are extremely necessary accessory. Oh, from that I remember that average lifespan of mobile is 3 to 4 years. After that, we may start to run into various problems. Like the mobile might start to hang or it is too slow, data space is not sufficient and sometimes the mobile isn't charging. Then what do we do? We buy a new phone. Why? Well, because it is more affordable than getting the old one repaired. But let's just say you have been very cautious and somehow you've managed to extend the lifespan of your mobile phone. Then what? You will start to run into some other problems. You see, after sometimes the hardware of your mobile will become old and so it will not be able to hand handle the new updates on the operating system. Simply so the manufacturer would stop updating your system and then what? Your mobile phone is dead. So you're forced to buy a new mobile and this cycle continues. And the next thing you know is that you're stuck in this endless cycle and your mobile phones are now part of the 10% of total e-waste. Sometimes necessities isn't always the case. Sometimes it is a strong attraction. Children are attracted to buy more toys. Toys that are singing and dancing and have shining lights. And sometimes some grown-ups also have some collection of electronics that might be intentional or unintentional. Many of my friends also have pairs and pairs of headphones. And that is all just for the sake of fun. And due to this fun, we end up causing huge damage to our environment. Even if you think that, oh, this small piece of airbud won't cause, cause much problem. I want you to remember that it is the small drops of water that make the ocean. If you see this problem on a small scale, for example, at your home, you won't find much problem. So many of us prepare, prefer to throw the electronic waste in the garbage. And from the garbage, they end up in the e-waste junkyards. Then what happens to them there? You know that the junkyard workers are actually aware that there are many precious metals in our mobile phone like gold, platinum and silver. And so they try to extract them even if they are present in tiny amounts. But you also should know that there are more harmful elements present in them such as beryllium, mercury, lead, nickel, chromium and much 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 more. And these extraction processes are also extremely harmful. Sometimes they would put the product in acid bath. Other time they would put these gadgets in fire and burn them. And when they burn them, the plastic on their coating also starts to burn which causes more air pollution. The acid baths also produce a lot of toxic fumes. Other times they would just bury the product in land which would, co which would cause them to leach. And when they leach, they release all these e-waste toxins into the land which causes land degradation. And due to this land degradation, the groundwater table also get polluted. These e-waste toxins also directly affects the health of the workers who work at as such low wage of dollar one point five per day. Even the neighbors around this place aren't safe. These all workers and neighbors are subjected to many risks, such as cancer if they inhale too much of this. Con uh, too much of this e-waste and also diseases related to heart, lungs, livers and even the skeletal system and brain. You see, 
Prenatal exposures have also shown adverse effects on newborn babies. Many such babies are born severely deformed. Children are also extremely sensitive to these toxins, which causes lowration of IQ and developmental stats. So you see, e-waste is burdening our environment so much, which is already stressed with humanity. We shouldn't burden it more. There are many small steps which we can take, such as when buying a new product, ask to yourself, is this product really a necessity or an attraction? Ask to yourself, how long will this product last with you? Also acknowledge that there are many of our brothers and sisters who are in need. We can also donate our products to them. They will be so much happy. Their lives could change for better. You can also repair and recycle much of the products. And many of times when your products, you are still using them, they can easily be maintained with lot of things. You can also ensure regular updating of operating system. And also overcharging is main reason why your products are failing. That could also be very easily avoided. There are many small steps like these which you can take. But the change can only be made when we all work together. You see, last year in 2021, 57.4 million tons of e-waste was generated. And this year, yet again, more will be created. Due to this dramatic increase in number of e-waste, the junkyards are overfilling, which is causing an expansion of them, which is adding to the pollution, which causes more global warming. All the five mass extinctions were somehow related to global warming. And currently, we're headed for the sixth one. And it can be only avoided if we all work together as one for something great. Thank you. I hope you had some takeaways from my TED talk.